12 underrated hair-raising animated horror content that you must hunt and watch. There's a popular and false belief that effective horror is depicted more efficiently through live-action shows and films, but people who have such views have clearly never paid attention to the classics of animated horror, like Coraline, Fire and Ice, Vampire Hunter D, Bloodlust, and Batman Gotham by Gaslight, just to name a few. As a channel that loves horror among other genres, it became imperative for Marvelous Videos to introduce and reintroduce you to some of the scariest and most horrifying content that you should watch. We'd like to take a moment to note that this is not the most comprehensive list of animated horror films and shows and also excludes Japanese anime, and we chose to mention only the content that we thought got swept under the rug of time and unpopularity. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Line. Take me to Beatrix, demon. Dante's Inferno, an animated epic 2010. Before leaving for the Third Crusade, Dante promised his love, Beatrice, that he would return to marry her and that he would remain loyal while on his journey. Beatrice, will you take my hand in marriage? Under God. Dante returns from the Third Crusade to unite with Beatrice and his father. However, he comes home to a bloody scene and discovers that the servants and his father have been slain and Beatrice is dying of a stab wound. As he comforts her, she passes away and Lucifer abducts her, ascending soul to take it to hell. Dante gives Lucifer a chase, but is hunted by various demons and entities. Finally, when he reaches the gates of hell, he is met with the poet Virgil, who offers to serve him as a guide to help him find Beatrice. F I will guide you, but you must put aside all division of spirit. Virgil reveals that hell is divided in the form of concentric circles, and Lucifer has taken Beatrice to the innermost one. Together, they shall infringe the circles like lust, greed, violence, treachery, and gluttony and fight the various demons, monsters, entities that guard or surround each circle. Ultimately, he will have to face Lucifer himself, but can a human fight the fallen angel? And like any fallen, you can be destroyed. The film is based on the video game of the same name, which in turn was influenced by the first part of the Divine Comedy written by Dante Alighieri in the 14th century. As Dante goes into the depths of hell with the help of Virgil, not only do the monsters become more terrifying, but the animation also gets grimmer and darker. His encounters with hordes of succubi in the second circle, or the Cerberus, the Hound in the third circle are noteworthy. Furthermore, the film is a theological encyclopedia. The viewer is deemed to learn about tons of mythological and historical characters. There are poets like Virgil, thinkers like Socrates, and kings like Alexander. Nine animation studios and production companies cinematize this epic animated film from Dante's epic poem. Naturally, the animation and story deal deadly blows to your soul, morals, and values, because in every move that Dante makes to save Beatrice, he is subjected to immense physical and psychological trauma. Dead Space Downfall 2008 and Dead Space Aftermath 2011. Humans managed to save themselves from extinction due to resource depletion only after they discovered the technology to crack open other planets and extract their resources. Many centuries later, in the year 2508, geologist Jennifer Barrows and her team find an ancient monolith containing a substance called the Marker. Jennifer and her team found the Marker on planet Aegis 7, and it wasn't long before bodies started piling up. To their greater horror, the dead were transforming into reanimated mutated corpse or necromorphs. As the necromorphs take over the people, the last surviving member manages to launch a distress beacon and ask for help. This is where Dead Space Downfall ends. Dead Space Aftermath is set in 2509 and is a direct sequel to the 2008 film Downfall. After intercepting the distress signal launched at the end of the first film, the authorities on Earth send a ship, USG O'Bannon, to investigate Aegis 7. But after contact with USG O'Bannon is lost, another ship is sent to locate it and rescue its members. Dead Space Aftermath deals with the harrowing and horrific ordeals on USG O'Bannon from the perspective of these survivors. Both films were prequels to the game Dead Space and Dead Space 2. Upon the release of the 2008 film, it garnered mixed reviews from critics who hailed the graphic violence and gore in the fight sequences and murders, but remained skeptical about the lack of horror and suspense.
However, the sequel took care of these fallacies and was made with more thought to the plot and subplots. Also, the 2011 movie had a richer color palette with more precise animation. Then, both Dead Space Downfall and Dead Space Aftermath aced in creating horror by way of gore and visceral slashings. That's the precise reason why these flicks made the cut on this list. <laughs> to her last death, 2019. Miriam DeKalb storms out of an office building. She's soaked in blood and is wielding an axe. She is immediately apprehended by the police and placed in a hospital. There she reveals to the cops that her father had asked Miriam and three of her siblings to unite. Many years ago, Mr. DeKalb wanted to run for vice president, but his four children came out to the public and spoke of their abused childhood at their father's hands. Our father, Cyrus DeKalb, is a narcissist and a sociopath. This led to a strain in their relationship. However, now that Mr. DeKal was suffering from a terminal brain disease, they decided to meet him. To everyone's surprise, Mr. DeKal orders his men to kill the children. Miriam turns out to be the only survivor of the ordeal. In the hospital, she is visited by an evil entity named Game Master, who promises her freedom if she takes part in his game. Miriam agrees, and the scenario is rerun from the point the four children arrive to meet Mr. DeKal. However, as the game proceeds, the Game Master bends the rules of the game to make it more attractive for the group of intergalactic entities that are watching and betting on the outcomes of Miriam's actions. Director Jason Axon took the age-old concept of a time loop from films like Edge of Tomorrow or Groundhog Day, but what's commendable is that Axon gave it a fresh spin. At no point does the film become lousy or uninteresting. There's a hefty amount of blood splashing throughout, but the violence doesn't feel forced. It all seems to add to the beauty and plot. Apart from scaring you visually, To Your Last Death also haunts you psychologically as it makes you dive deep into the twisted backstories of the siblings. For instance, one of them was charged with the murder of his girlfriend by way of erotic asphyxiation. However, some might dislike the hand-drawn style of animation that results in the characters being a bit jerky. Fear of the Dark 2007. The film is a horror anthology with five stories. The first story is about a cruel and crazy older man and his four violent dogs. He releases these dogs on unsuspecting victims who the dogs maul. One of these innocents was a dancing woman and strangely the attacking dog also gave her cunnilingus. The second story deals with Eric who captured a humanoid beetle that later escaped from his trap. Meanwhile, his new girlfriend becomes obsessed with having sex and cooking for him. It is later revealed that the girlfriend developed a mutation and is now using Eric's body as an incubator for the humanoid beetle's eggs. In the third story, a young girl, Ayakawa Sumako, is being treated for recurring nightmares. However, the doctor who cares for her maintains that she must see the end of her horrific dreams in order to get cured. Poor Ayakawa will need to witness herself murdering her own family and other horrific sights like ghouls and apparitions from Japanese folklore. In the fourth story, a young boy in rural France shares his disturbing thoughts about his uncle's disappearance with his mysterious friend. The friend alleges that a mystical creature from the sky must have assaulted the poor uncle. Later, the boy develops reason to believe that the friend and the creature are one and the same thing. The last story deals with a man who traps himself in an abandoned house in an attempt to escape a blizzard. It is never really revealed in the film if he was being haunted by a ghost of the mistress of the house or if it was merely his imagination. This anthology is a black and white French film that delves and dwells in the subject of fear and darkness. However, the most striking feature is the use of multiple styles of animation, including 2D and 3D. Instead of giving you jump scares, these stories are sure to fill you with terror and anxieties related to modern concepts of sexual insecurities and traditional superstitions. Batman Gotham by Gaslight 2018 This Batman film is based in the Victorian era Gotham. Undeniably, the city is plagued with all kinds of evil and crimes, but the most terrible thing happening in Gotham right now is the wrath being brought by Jack the Ripper on poor and destitute girls. After an orphan prostitute named Ivy becomes the Ripper's latest victim, <coughs> Batman decides to end the series of killings. However, the people of Gotham believe that Batman and the Ripper are the same. Batman then meets and bonds with a stage actress and activist Selina Kyle who also wants the infamous killer to get arrested. However, in this historical Gotham, the good and the bad wear the same masks. Batman will not just have to fight Jack the Ripper, but also his friends and confidants. 
catch him, and if he's guilty, he hangs. But I want him alive. Now fan out! This is the second Batman animated film to get an R rating from the Motion Picture Association of America. Few scenes like the Ripper throwing the Arkham Asylum doctor at his own crazy patients, who tears him into pieces, or the part where Batman discovers the identity of Jack the Ripper are certainly not for the squeamish. The film tends to revolve around the topics of sex, serial killers, and prostitution in a manner that one doesn't expect animated films to do. However, Gotham by Gaslight does so with charm and visual brilliance. Interestingly, the writers took plenty of references from Sherlock Holmes, and upon viewing the film, you'll find resemblances with the characters of Sherlock Holmes in Batman, Irene Adler in Selina Kyle, and Lestrade in Commissioner Gordon. We think the film is a gem of R-rated marvels because of the intelligent approach of animation and cinematization that's grounded to the source material. Well, the source is of course the comic of the same name written by Brian Augustin and Mike Mignola. Have fun watching this one, we highly recommend it. And if you've seen it already, tell us in the comments about your favorite scenes. Soul Station 2016 Kiei Sun lives with her no-good boyfriend Ki Wung, who keeps trying to blackmail her back into the prostitution business she had escaped from to pay their dues. After an argument causes them to separate, Ki Wung is confronted by her father, Suk Yul, who threatens Ki Wung to take him to her. The rest of the movie is the numerous action-filled attempts of survival against the rapidly growing horde of undead. Upon reuniting, Hye Sun informs Ki Wung that Suk Yu was in fact her master from her former brothel. In a confrontation, Ki Wung is murdered and Suk Yu assaults a dying Hye Sun. Karmically, Hye Sun turns into a zombie and kills Suk Yu, and the stage is set for the second wave shown in Train to Busan. Yan Sang Ho's grotesque animation of 2016's Soul Station is a gore filled apocalyptic satire written and directed in Yan's preset. The film revolves around the homeless living on the pavements of Seoul Station and the narrative points out some of the sad realities of the fair city of Seoul. Class-based divisions, mistreatment of the poor, political unrest to name a few. The realism is portrayed through scenes of administrative ignorance towards the impoverished and the authorities unwilling to differentiate between the poor and the predator. Seoul Station is a prequel to the 2016 film Train to Busan. Yes, there's a zombie apocalypse and there's plenty of gore. But what is more horrific is the extremely twisted father-daughter relationship. Furthermore, it feels that the film is an open letter to sexual exploitations and social injustice faced by poor women in particular. We do not wish to compare Seoul Station with Train to Busan because despite taking place at a difference of just one day, these two films deal with inherently different subject matters. Nevertheless, the picturization of the gore and especially the zombies is top notch. Resident Evil Degeneration 2008 The first motion capture CG film based on the Japanese video game series Resident Evil Degeneration is based on the aftermath of the destruction of Raccoon City. Claire is on the search for the mastermind behind a series of bioterrorist attacks when she gets caught in one herself. She meets Angela and Leon, who come to rescue her and get her to the research facility Will Pharma. Throughout the film, the trio fights the odds as they reveal the government's hand in the destruction of Raccoon City while battling Angela's brother Curtis, who is a living host for the G-Virus. The film is well adjusted and detailed to please gamers who have wished to watch a rendition of the game on the screen. While some may think that the film is a 98 minute cutscene from the series and lacks sufficient animation or dialogues, we at Marvelous Videos are of the opinion that it's certainly worth a watch for the detailed horror elements and brutality. It's one of those few flicks based on games that appeal to fans and uniform viewers alike. Unlike the live action movies of the Resident Evil universe, this film is based entirely on the game and not on a script. Tales of the Black Freighter 2009. A young mariner called the Sea Captain gets marooned after his ship destructs. His sole intention now is to travel to his hometown so that he could save his family and warn the townsfolk of the impending attack by a group of pirates called the Black Freighter. The Sea Captain devises a most unrealistic makeshift raft using the bodies of his dead crew. As he undergoes the arduous journey, he begins to lose his mind in sanity. 
Upon finally reaching his hometown, he thinks that the black freighter has taken over the town and he kills an innocent couple, assuming them to be pirates. <laughs> Later, he enters his darkened home and makes his wife meet the same fate. By now, he is completely devastated by the gruesome acts that he has committed and seeks refuge in the seashore, where he finally confronts the notorious pirate group. Tales of the Black Freighter is an extremely unique film because it is based on a comic within the Watchmen comics published by DC. The Black Freighter appears in issues 3, 5, 8, 10, and 11. Zack Snyder has a thing for detailed superhero films, and hence Tales of the Black Freighter was supposed to be featured in his 2009 live-action adaption of Watchmen, but since the runtime was pushing 3 hours, the animated film was cut short. Luckily, it could be found in the ultimate cut. Snyder wanted Gerard Butler in the live-action film, but since that didn't happen, Snyder made sure Butler voiced the role of the sea captain in the animated version. The film is a powerhouse of grim and dark imagery, and it efficiently throws viewers into pits of psychological trauma and dread. Butler did an awesome job of playing the young mariner with his amazing voice, much like he did in the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. However, if you want to watch the film for just one reason, then it should be for experiencing the mental state of a man who's desperate to save his family, but ends up being the cause of their doom. Who is about to take your head off? <laughs> Todd McFarlane's Spawn, 1997 TV series. Al Simmons was a Marine Force Recon Lieutenant Colonel who was betrayed and killed by his friend. When he was breathing his last, he swore to seek his revenge, and after death, he ended up in hell because of the assassinations he carried out as a man. Simmons makes a deal with the devil. You got a deal for your soul. In return for getting the ability to walk the earth once again, he was to serve in the devil's army as a hellspawn or spawn. However, the devil was treacherous and gave him a rotting, maggot-ridden, and pungently cadaverous body. Furthermore, he was brought back to his new life five years after his death. By now, his wife Wanda had moved on and married a man named Terry Fitzgerald who worked for nefarious government official Jason Wynn. Wynn was the real cause behind Simmons' death and now he threatened the lives of Wanda, Terry, and their daughter Cyan. As Simmons finds that he doesn't exist in Wanda's life, he swears to protect her new family. Meanwhile, the devil sends his minions to persuade Spawn into committing sins to tip the balance between evil and good. As the series progresses, the difference between good and evil starts to diminish. Todd McFarlane is known to the world for his art in The Amazing Spider-Man. However, his artistic expertise came to the forefront when he created and wrote the Spawn comic series for Image Comics. The show won the 1999 Emmy for Outstanding Animation Program. Critics and fans hailed the dark tone, gripping animation, effective voice acting, and of course, the skillful writing. However, what made Spawn a classic was its graphic violence and the grim development of characters. Spawn does nothing short of being Hell's minion when he massacres anyone who comes his way, but at the same time, he maintains a virtuous heart. Despite working under a Machiavellian villain or the devil, he constantly struggles to differentiate between right and wrong. Todd McFarlane's Spawn ended on a cliffhanger and a sequel was in production but was axed eventually. This is probably the only flaw about the show. Hellboy Animated Blood and Iron Video 2007 in the 20th century, a beautiful countess and vampiress named Erzabet Andreshko used to kill young women to remain young herself and retain her own beauty. However, Professor Trevor Brutenholm tricks her into the sunlight, causing her body to burn, but her ashes fly into the castle and take refuge in one of Erzabet's Iron Maidens. Years later, Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense assigns Hellboy, Liz Sherman, and Abe Sapien to investigate the ghost-ridden mansion of a publicity-hungry billionaire. As the team reaches the mansion, they discover an elaborate plot to resurrect Erzabet Andreshko from the dead. To make matters worse, the Countess had sold her soul to the Greek goddess and queen of witches Hecate. Hecate intends to convince and persuade Hellboy to join the forces of evil and darkness, and should he choose to defy Hecate, the goddess will fight him. The sheer fact that the prime antagonist of the film is based on the character of Elizabeth Batori from Transylvania of the 1600s is enough to create a sense of dread and fear among the viewers. Batori was known to have killed more than 300 girls in acts of sadism and likely occultism. The film is a perfect blend of haunted house and vampire genres and creates more than a few moments of chills and scares. The scenes where a naked Erzabet Andreshko bathes in the blood of her victims are reflective of the fact that blood and iron is not really for younger viewers. 
viewers. Furthermore, the film provides a nice variety of monsters in the likes of vampires, harpy hags, werewolves, and minotaurs. Directors Victor Cook and Tad Stones should be hailed for remaining grounded to the source material in the form of Mike Mignola's Hellboy, Wake the Devil comics. However, the only flaw in the film is the lack of a real threat to Hellboy. Nevertheless, it justifies itself as a horror film and remains at par with the live action films. Please feel free to tell us in the comments which among these is your favorite and why. This will help us in deciding our future titles. The Spine of Night 2021 The film begins with a swamped witch named Zod climbing a snowy mountain towards a giant skull. There she meets with an ancient guardian who is the protector of a mystical flower called the Bloom. Like the Apple of Eden, Bloom also gives knowledge, but there's a cost to it. Nevertheless, Zod seems to have once known the power that comes from it and seeks to become its new and eternal guardian. Now the forces of various eras and cultures will have to join hands and defeat the dark forces or else humanity shall be wiped off the face of the earth. The ultra-violent animated film comes with rich scenes of nudity, violence, and gore. For instance, in the first scene where Zod is introduced, she is wearing nothing apart from a necklace of bones. The film is based in a mystical world where dark forces rule and beings like grave robbers and necromancers are not unusual. Directors Philip Jellett and Morgan Galen King tell us an adult story using animation in the fantasy genre. To make the film timeless in feel and look, they preferred to use hand-drawn rotoscoping, which was prevalent in the late 70s through the early 80s. The directors took clear inspiration from the works of Frank Frazetta and Ralph Bakshi, and particularly from their 1983 film, Fire and Ice. Naturally, The Spine of Night has all the essential elements of being a wonderful animated film for adult viewers. Being released in 2021, you don't want to miss this gem. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Thanks.